Welcome to Cork of the North podcast. It's Thursday, six o'clock. Big thanks to everybody uh, that's been watching and downloading as well. We do really, really appreciate. We need to talk about a few things. Number one, Patreon, please, for the mother of God. We need money. Um, we are, we've just hit an iceberg and we've a leak and we need it fixed, right? This, this stuff doesn't pay for itself. Ah, this is a shit intro. We'll start again. I was going well. No, <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to Cork in the North. A uh, big thanks to everyone for being here. Super to see you or hear you or find out that you've clicked play. What a weird intro this was. This is, I can't speak this, this afternoon, but anyway, thanks very much to everyone for being here. If you can and you like us and you like what we do, please do support us over on Patreon. Three pound a month. Come on. Sign up. I know who hasn't. You can ask us questions. You can get discounts on loads of stuff. We've got loads of cool things happening over the next few weeks as we finish the redevelopment of the studio. We've got a new sofa coming. We've got a new sign behind me. That one's going to be moved. We've got loads of different things coming on. New merch and all that kind of stuff. Pens. No, we're not doing pens. We're doing more t-shirts, beanie hats, lanyards, uh, mugs and stuff like that. So please do sign up to the Patreon. You'll also get discount on tickets on the live show as well when that comes out in um, December. Uh, which will be on sale there first and it could sell out on the Patreon first. So you have to sign up to do it. And it just helps support the podcast. You can sign up. There's over 25 episodes up there as well. Extra stuff that you can watch. And also when I'm on tour in 2024, the tickets get released to the Patreons first. We're just trying to build. We're trying to build and we're trying to grow. That's all we're trying to do in this saturated market of straight white men. Anyway, speaking of one straight white man, <laughs> we have a comedian, Sean Hegarty with me. Good to see you, Sean. How are you? And we have... Uh, we have uh, what can only be described as someone that is not taking his medication today. I wanted to dress up as something scary. And what's, <laughs> what's scarier in Catholic Ireland than the Pope? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. James McKegney, how are you, man? I'm doing a good one. Can I just say, you both look, you look like you've been chopping wood all morning. That's the look I go for. This is a manly look. Yeah. And then the shoes. Yeah. And the look shoes at those, as well. can you yeah. get those? And James, you look like you've been hiding out the back of schools. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for you him to come out. <laughs> Selling communion out of his pipe. <laughs> yeah. You? yeah, you I two lads you two lads have worked together loads, haven't you? Loads? Yeah, we've done yeah, yeah. Loads of gigs. Have we recently put into a WhatsApp group together? We were, yeah. Oh, have, you, have you tried leaving yeah. one of them? It's comedian dick pics. Yeah, it is. <laughs> comedian dick pics. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's just he's sharing the ones. It's just us two like. snapping each other. <laughs> it's between us. <laughs> um, so, James, have you recently moved? Yeah, dude, I'm in Belfast now. You're in Belfast yeah, now? So you've move. moved up from? Mahara. What a move, what a change. What, what a move, yeah. Is that like coming to, is that like moving from, say, Belfast to, you know, Australia? How Hong big of a difference, how big of a difference is yeah, this? Dude, do you know what's weird? Like, see, going back to Mahara now, like, I used to be like, oh, this place is like fucking wee town. Oh, see, now you're going back, it's pure bliss. Hmm. Do you ever go back to, like, a wee country town when you've living yeah. in the city? Why is that? I don't know. It's quiet, man. It's just silent. Belfast, a lot of hustle and bustle. The time but I think fit. Belfast is quite small. Yeah, mm. dude, I, it's made me realise I can never live in, like, London. I can never I can never do a bigger city than Belfast. That's, that's like one of those Christmas Hallmark films, you know, where, like, yeah. the guard goes back to your hometown <laughs> and she meets this guy, like, who's, like, really successful. He's, like, the talk of the town. Yeah, just yeah. so happens he's Santa. <laughs> oh, mate, yeah. Maybe that'll happen, man. Do you feel like Billy Big Balls too when you go back to your wee village and you're like it's the city guy? Do you yeah, like yeah, it's like pointless like, looking at you? Fuck you, too, yeah. yeah. And what about you, Sean? Have you ever lived in a big city? Yeah, I lived in Belfast here. I lived um, here for about four or five years. What do you and live then... now? Pardon? Where do you live now? Uh, Craig Evans. Oh! I know, I know. Craig Evans. That's, just, <laughs> that's the city, that's the face you have to make when you say it. Oh. I've been to uh, Sean's house, and can I just say, you walk in, it's full of kids. Yeah. Full of kids. You're five kids, don't you? Yeah. Have you not thought about the snip? I got the snip. Oh, did you get it? two more after that. Your sperm is <laughs> what? unstoppable. Yeah. Hold I got on a, a second. You got the snip? Yeah, so I got a vasectomy, right? And fully worked and stuff. Um, and then... Well, it didn't. I tried to get a reversal. Right. And the reversal didn't work. Which is weird because this is the, the cringiest thing about doing it all, right? Is that you have to skate, skate in the, a little shot glass, right? Okay. And then bring it over to the hospital and literally go like within 15, 20 minutes. So if you live further away, you have to you go into your car just in the car park. Off. Is there a bunch of dudes in the car park just jacking off? I, oh, I, yeah, yeah. I imagine you'll be there in that outfit. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that I'm like a little wee basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm from a small town now. Look at me, I'm a big city boy, in a Southern Irish accent. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, um, so then I got the reversal and it didn't work. Uh, so I I stayed um, ejaculate free 
And no do you know, one of the things people, th this is something that most men don't realize too. See, when you get the snip, everything is exactly the same, only you can't get someone pregnant. People think like when you come, it's just like powder or dust or something, but uh, it's pe exactly the same. It's ex exactly the same. Shit. Tastes delicious. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Taste doesn't change. One Taste doesn't change. Is, but yeah. I find that. I mean, I I've never. It's, did it. you know that? Did you know that? I've never. Well, first of all, I've You've never, never thought never about it. Never come on your life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I have done. <laughs> but I I've never had a been with somebody that's had a pregnancy scare. I've never actively tried to have a baby with anybody. I've never even. I was going to say come close, but I've never <laughs> even. Oh. Pardon the pun. I've never even. How would you say? It's not even been on my radar to even think about having a child. Yet mm. here you are with five. I know, I know. Why? I, I don't know. <laughs> it's I, I, amazing. I, like that you, your mindset and my mindset and the way you live your life is completely different. Completely different. What's the age range like? Oldest is coming 20 and the youngest is a couple of months. So I'm some literally at, that is some gap. I'm at both ends. That's like, five World Cups, is it? Six <laughs> World Cups? Yeah. Any, uh, yeah. Five. Any mistakes or were they all planned? Most of them. Most of them. Uh, were planned or mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No, no uh, comment. There, there's no such thing as a mistake when it comes to a child. It's a surprise. It's they surprise. call it. Yeah, that's what they teach you I to say. My sister was a mistake. My mom told her that. Really? She was, yeah, because she's like 10 years younger than me. Really? Yeah, dude. And then I'm, when did she get out for being a school shooter? <laughs> 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 It's any day night. James, you're a you're a gay man. How do you feel about the uh are you would you like to have kids? No. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like a, there's a time in your life where like that maybe dawns on you that you're like, that'd be cool. But I haven't reached that like yet. Like if you meet mm. the love of your life and have you and him babies. you and him decide, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could have a child? Man, I can you just pop over to Sean's house and <laughs> yeah, think, can we yeah, like yeah. Just babysit? <laughs> Baby factory, man. Just babysit? No, I can barely look after a dog. That's like, a dog mm. is too much, man. Yeah. Like, constantly up at you looking at... I couldn't even imagine. At least with a dog, you can leave it outside if it's annoying. I mean, <laughs> can you can You, you do can do it with kids, but it's massively it's frowned, frowned upon. upon. Yeah. Yeah. Massively, yeah. yeah. yeah but but does that, does that, is, that, is that not something that concerns you? No. Because obviously you can adopt now, can't you? Yes. You yeah, maybe I mean? that would be a good, good route to go down. I thought you were in the checks as well. No? Uh, Oh, really. no. oh, oh, oh. It would take a lot of effort. Right. Emotionally and So it's like being married yeah. then? Yeah, it would take a lot. <laughs> so have you had girlfriends? Or girlfriends? I had one girlfriend, yeah. Well, do you know when you're a teenager and you have like a girlfriend that you see once every two months type thing? Mm -hmm. It was a lot of that. Right. So it wasn't, it wasn't legitimate. Yeah. Okay. And tell me now, Sean, with the fact that you've had your five kids now, two with Diona, Diona mm -hmm. Doherty. Are you, have you sat down and both looked each other in the eye and went, we're done? Or is there, oh, we're 100% on, is done. there an option on the table to go again? Yeah, no, we just have to look each other in the eyes. We don't even have to speak and we know we're done. Is it you because of it's, it's old dreams. Yeah, see, we, we talk about this on our podcast. We recently started a, a, a loosely parenting-based yeah. podcast. And it's not even about like parenting. It's about us just trying to survive as parents but you've 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 survived as a dad and now you're yeah. you, you're in for like another round it's like it's like yeah you know like when someone does a full heavyweight boxing match and you've been battered for 12 rounds and you're going right i'm retiring <laughs> and you've done back. a ricky hatton mate and you've yeah. come back out again is yeah. the final kid you're like you'll be sweet like you know when the first kid oh you're yeah, like, yeah yeah like yeah. now you're like yeah like even when our daughter came along because my my youngest before my daughter was he he was 12 now he's 14 and my daughter's two which is fast math, but um, math. now she's two. Like she, she took all our attention the first year yeah. or two. She had a few sort of troubles and stuff. She had like a creak in her neck and colic and um, just issues with her insides and stuff. Wait and till she gets over thirty. <laughs> I know, I know. Wait till she starts playing indoor football. <laughs> Fucking. But then you the five side team. That's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, well, we have one girl, so I have to continue playing now. Yeah. I was hoping to retire, but um, yeah, one of them's a girl. But now we have our four or five month old. Like we've just came from a meeting and he just lay on the floor of the Europa Hotel uh, piano bar, just laying on the floor playing with his toys and stuff while we had a meeting. You just make it work, don't you? You do. You he just, just he has to fit into your life. Whereas before with all the other kids, it was no, 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 your life has to change. Whereas yeah. it doesn't, it shouldn't. That's, that, that's what concerns me. Mm. Like I... I panic about being a parent because I I don't I would suffer any with quite strong anxiety although very well masked mm -hmm. yeah. like you wouldn't Mask. think so like you know what I mean like like 
very well covered. Like people think, oh, happy kind of go lucky, but I'd be riddled with stuff. Inside, it's a mess. Mm. In- oh, inside. Yeah, right. you don't want to like, go in there. It's horrendous inside, right? <laughs> but my anxiety, and you might be able to help me, and I don't know if it's something you'd worry about, James, is, is the fear of them when they get to the 15, the 16, the 17, what they're doing. Because when yeah. I was 16, 17, I mean, I was up to absolute all, all sorts. Yes. Yeah. And the amount of tricky situations I put myself in, now luckily I got out of them and nothing bad happened. But you just think to yourself, like, I think it's the fear of the, mm. and the worry that you kind of raise this child and you invest so much emotionally, physically, you change your life to bring that child up. And then all of a sudden they could go out and make one silly decision. Like, does that does that stuff come into your head? Not as much now because the modern child now just plays Fortnite and goes on TikTok and learns dance moves and vapes and stuff. Do you and know what I mean? So slurs from the ch- yeah, <laughs> Fortnite chat rooms. Yeah, so um, so you don't really have that as much anymore. Whereas when we were growing up, because the technology was so much like less and we didn't have that much and everyone was quite poor and stuff. Whereas nowadays, obviously, with credit cards and sort of money's just at everyone's exposure uh, disposal now. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it's weird, but um, my kids they they're just not bothered. Like you, you don't have to worry about really picking them up at three in the morning under a, an underpass. You just they just want to play Minecraft and Fortnite and yeah. they chat to their mates online now. Do you know what I mean? So do you think then that you in a way you're kind of reassured that they're indoors a little bit more? Yeah. But also it's kind of like it's when I was though. young, I was outside kicking a football against yeah, the curb. Yeah, yeah. Like I suppose there's a bit of a balance, isn't it? You've yeah. got to get like the right balance. James, when you were a kid growing up, were you an indoorsy or an outdoorsy? No, I was totally outdoor. Like my mom, I think she was very good at just letting me figure it out. Like she was always there, but she was like, like I was outside all the time. Yeah. And if I was out late, she'd just be like, no sweat. Kind of like, let me make the mistakes. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think I'd, I did anything too, too bad. Like I always kind of have my own limits. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like, you, you, I don't you, know if I was good you were kind of, Would you say you were maybe a little bit more mature when you were younger? Maybe. You kind, of was, knew, you kind of knew where the line was. Yeah, but yeah, I was, I was definitely, I was like, I loved, I was like a 13, started drinking when I was 14. That's young. That's right? yeah, a young one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was about 15 when I started. Yeah. 17 and a half. Yes, yeah, and a half. Yeah, yeah. And a half yeah. Six yeah. months to go till I was eighteen, and I was you in thought, a bar, and I was just I, everyone just knew that I didn't drink. And, and I, as soon as you started drinking, you started having kids as well, didn't you? Yeah, man, the core. <laughs> <was there. laughs> Do you know what? If you started drinking after. at fourteen, you wouldn't have had a baby when you were so young. I was about to say that. Yeah, you, I honestly believe this, and I, 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 I think you both will agree with me, right? I was introduced to alcohol at fifteen. Yeah. In a very controlled environment. Yep. Here, have have a couple of sips of a bottle, sips of a bottle of beer, then yes. I'd have half a pint. A cider, and I would do it maybe once every six months in the surroundings of family, mm. like an auntie's party, yes. an uncle's party, right? Seventeen came along, two or three pints at a family do. If if I was in the pub, somebody might sneak me a pint and I would sip it behind the thing. But I was kind of getting into pubs when I was sixteen, seventeen anyway. But then when eighteen came along, you were the veteran. fact that I was legal, it 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 didn't excite me yeah. because I was used to it mm-hmm. anyway. And therefore, I didn't rush to take it. I agree. I think that I think by the time I was eighteen, I was almost bored of it. But I still did it. But I wasn't like enthralled by that. Let's get fucked yeah. up. Yeah, and Do I you know what I mean. I know a couple of guys uh, when I was growing up. Their parents were very strict with them on the alcohol, and they were like, "You can never drink to your eighteen. And yeah. as soon as they got there, they rebelled. They yeah. And when they rebelled, they went OTT. Yep. And I think later down the line, that ended up having a little bit more consequence for them. You see that in the Holy Lands quite a bit. I like, think so. Oh yeah, like people who have never drank get to the Hoylands and just lose. The, it's like they're being released the into the fucking yeah, wild, yeah, 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 and yeah. everything's a yes to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything is just you can do everything. Yeah, it's an insane situation because you're you've got your first house with your mates and given a pile of money, yeah, and you're allowed to drink. It's no a recipe about, for disaster. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. and, and then people get pregnant and there's fighting and then yeah, people don't realize like when you're 17, 18, some of the actions you take will have massive consequence for you when you're yeah. in your late 20s, early 30s. People going out getting pregnant. They may not want to keep the child to pick up STDs. You know, they may meet boyfriends and be in relationships or girlfriends with them or partners, you know, till they're 24, 25. That can turn toxic. And, oh, yeah. You know, like, you know, and that's, I think that's something that would have, that would be of a concern mm-hmm. with me because I sometimes find it hard to manage my own self. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Do you know what I mean? Being but do you, do you, did you feel like that when you started to have kids? How am I going to raise a child? I can barely do A, B, C, D yeah, myself. Yeah, I? like um, the first thing I bought when I found out that I was going to be a dad was a potty. 
which a child doesn't go in and they, they don't use until they're about two. Did you make use of it until the child was ready? Yeah, I, I genuinely, <laughs> I had cereal out of it and then I used it as a, I used yeah, it as a solid, money box. There's no leakage. <laughs> <laughs> you got to so, try it once as well to make sure it's yeah, suitable yeah. for purpose. Oh, of course, but I, I would come home and if I had like loose change, I would just stick it all in this potty <laughs> and it would just build up and up and then I would take it to the shop and get it changed. With, and, in the potty? Like, give me that. <laughs> Interesting about being a parent, you know, uh, and I wonder, and I, I think I've learned myself that I've got no patience with people, right? Mm. I was in Germany, right, at the weekend, right? And I nearly, nearly, nearly went for the receptionist in the hotel. <laughs> and I mean, like, and I, I, and I think people think I'm a bit of a, a bit of a whinge sometimes, right? But comedy is born out of whinging, <laughs> right? It is, though, isn't it? Like, comedy yeah, is, yeah, every, is, every comedian is a, compl it's, we're, compla we're professional complainers. Yeah, man. Yeah, That's yeah. what comedy is, right? I checked into the hotel, right? I'm in Berlin, proper, proper German place like it is germany like but it's it's very german <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you yeah. know what i mean like like we went because i'm a big history fan and there's history like it's not there's good we said it's good it's not good history some of the history isn't great <laughs> history like, like, <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah. if you ever notice all history is bad yeah, <laughs> like, there's no good. good history like you yeah. know what i mean so we check in and walk in this woman with a bitchy face on her i was like hi yeah now she could have had a long day fair enough right i walk in hype checking in going through the whole thing and she went, are you here for business or personal? And I went, personal. And she went, it says business on the thing. And I went, oh, right, okay, well, just change it. And she goes, but it says business. I'm like, okay, cool, nice one. Uh, Doesn't but matter. It's, but just, <laughs> it's personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I said, well, just put in personal. And she goes, well, I can't change it now. I went, okay. I goes, does it make any difference? She went, no. And I went, okay. Cool. <laughs> I, goes, I goes, okay, cool. And she goes, but you said business. And I went, okay, so it's business. She goes, and what business are you doing? I said, I'm not doing any business. <laughs> I just told you it's personal. I My girlfriend's over there crying in the corner. <laughs> she wants to go to sleep. You're wearing a Hitler costume. You've yeah, never I'm just looking at her going, like, what? <laughs> Hitler it, does not, it does not make any difference whether this is business or personal to the price of the room. Yeah. Anyway. I, th I think people in Berlin, though, they don't. as soon as we start speaking English, they do not like it. Oh. So I had a similar experience in Berlin. Like, you go to a reception, they're smiling, you start speaking English, they're like... Oh, but they yeah. think you're English. Yeah, so they we think were we're English. In, you go up to them, right? If you go up to the Germans, right? And I was like, hiya, uh, you speak English? And they're like, oh, yes. And I was like, I'm Irish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm Irish. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you see the mood change. <laughs> oh, yeah, they instant. We were there, right? South Africa played England in the rugby and we went to the Irish pub, right? Classic. Uh, we wanted to watch the rugby. We go to the Irish pub, right? <laughs> We have no imagination. <laughs> so we go into the Irish pub and in the Irish pub, there's English people, there's South Africans and there's Irish people. Okay, so you've got to understand, as an Irish rugby fan, I'm furious that we're not playing. Secondly, yeah. we already beaten South Africa. I want South Africa to win because England hadn't had a tough, tough game in the World Cup so far. Yeah. But we're watching it anyway and it's all, the game is going on. So England are doing really well, like they were doing really well up until like, whatever to say, the 70th minute, whatever, right? And the English guys behind us are like giving it all. You fucking, go on England, go on. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Me. And my girlfriend sitting there going, they're, they're wrecking me head. Like the South Africans were just sitting there like watching it, enjoying. Yes. They're like, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it, we'll get it right. Anyway, South Africa win the game. And the South Africans are like, you know, they're all going mad. And the English then start shouting about World War II oh, in the mate. fucking pub. And I'm like, how the <laughs> heck is this? And he goes, we got two World Wars. And then another guy in the background just shout, we got a cricket. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, South Africa. Like I was like this. And then this Irish guy who was over the other side shouts out, goes, why aren't you watching this in the English pub? <laughs> yes. it's like, there is no English pub. <laughs> yes. And it starts kicking off, like the South Africans. And like the Irish, I'm in the middle thinking to myself, what do I do here? Because I've never been in a fight. Mm. Yes. So we just finished our drink and just left. And I was sitting there going, the immaturity of these men in a pub when sport comes on to think, oh, we've lost the rugby, so we're just going to bring up World War, the two world wars. <laughs> yes. It's like, it's ridiculous. Have you guys ever been close to being in a fight in a pub, like a riot or anything like that? I've been in a few fights, mostly in school. Oh, really? I remember people were pushing me and another guy to fight, and we they like pushed us so much that we were in the end. We were just like, do you know what? We need to fight here. We need to give the people what they want. And <laughs> we should have just kissed. Yeah. <laughs> we should have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you rubbed my knee there. <laughs> so we he, he threw a punch, and I think I, he missed or something, and then I punched him, and it, it hit him, and I, my fist hit him in the eye, and his eye just went whoom, red straight away. And straight away, I gave him a hug and said sorry and took him up to the school nurse. And everyone oh. was like, fuck's <laughs> sake, is that it? And uh, then another time, uh, the same thing happened again. A different guy pushed us about and stuff. And this guy was wearing like a big fucking like pound coin ring, you know, 
like someone's framed a pine coin and stuck in the ring and he smashed me in the face he got the first dig and my eye just went up like a like a golf ball straight Queen away Lizzie really? just knocking yeah. you out and then it was just a, a scuffle then until it was broken up and that's it yeah yeah and then ulster hall obviously do you know oh, the, the, boxing. <laughs> the the comedian's boxing yeah yes what yeah. about you james i've never been in a fight no no never but i i remember like in school when everyone started watching you remember green street yeah, yeah. That was like a big movie when we were in school. So people started being like, let's go out for fights. And I was like, <laughs> fuck yeah, this is going to be great. And then you'd go to the nightclub uh, out in the car park after everyone would start fighting. And I instantly realized it was like, this is not for me. So no. it's like, you guys can stick to that. I'm out. Do you ever, though, do you ever see a fight? Like, this doesn't happen to me now. But when I was younger, when I seen a fight, I'm talking like late teenager, I would get real teary and really sad and emotional seeing people fight. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Because you could say, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's going to be emotional trauma. We'll you're going to have to send an apology text. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so weird, isn't it? It is so weird. It's you're a lover of a fighter. Uh, nowadays, be, if yeah. I see a fight on the street, I go, oh, there's a fight over there. Phone. Straight away. Just like that, that film. Oh, this is going TikTok. I've got good views now. Oh, yeah. That'll, <laughs> that's, what you do. that'll like, boost the channel. Just, just put a good... Uh, English guy versus Irish guy. That'll get a million hits. Yeah, Even yeah. though it's probably two French people. <laughs> you know what I mean? each other with baguettes like, and stuff. Do you know how, do you know how easy it is to manipulate anything on, on the oh, internet? Oh, yeah. If you put a headline... Irish guy versus English guy, even though it's got nothing to do with Irish guy <laughs> yeah. versus English guy. Go you're viral. looking at a quarter of a million hits. Yeah, yeah you're easy. like going, people are people just constantly look for stuff that they could be angry at. Hundred percent. Yeah. All the thumbnails pissed. now too, they're all very manipulative, and nine out of ten of them, you click the link after reading something that entices you in, and it has nothing to do with oh. it. But all they it. need it is that mad. click. Yeah, they just need that click. Yeah. So it's all about the thumbnail. It's the future, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, should be like, you're not going to believe what Robert De Niro said last week. And you click on it. Robert De Niro, a 78-year-old actor, originally born in Chicago or whatever, has um, been married twice and has four kids. Recently started mm. the film, The Godfather and all this. And next year you're going like, oh, oh, this is this is absolute not Like, this is yeah. this copy and paste from Wikipedia. Yeah, mm. And yeah. then it comes to the world, click here to find out what he did. And then you turn over to a woman with a tits out. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like, well, it's a good deal. Like, I mean, it's, a fair, it's a fair swap. Like, and then it goes to a second video, doesn't it? And then Robert De Niro starts talking, and it's, ah, ah. And then, and next, you know, you're in a toilet, and uh, <laughs> you're trying to get to the hospital within seven minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what have you brought with you? Uh, just a little present for, like, a, almost like a, like a housewarming... Oh, thank um, you so much, Feel free to open an eye, open it after. It's yeah, entirely up to you. If like, you remember um, when we just started the, the podcast in the old studio, yeah. Sean brought us a gift. In one of the one. first episodes. Really? Yeah. So you go, you're going to Also, nice. before you open it, remember, we did say we're in a group chat sending pictures of our dicks, so it's, this, this is be... Sean's dick. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> oh! Oh, my God. So this can be for the studio, this can be Sean, for you at home. It's Sean, entirely this cost money. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that. Sean. <laughs> You're a father of five. <laughs> you must be getting some child allowance. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, two of your that's kids aren't is. eating this week because yeah, of this. had a gig last week. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it is? Yeah. Oh my God. Let me see this. It's a big reveal. Sean. Sean. Sean, there was absolutely no need for that. This is, uh, excuse the pun. This is you down to a T. Isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Listen, I'm actually uh, quite quite a bit taken aback by this. Actually, so to everyone listening, uh, please do jump onto the YouTube. We will put a picture up afterwards mm. um, of this. But Sean has got me a beautiful frame, beautiful frame, and it's a map of Ireland, but all the golf courses. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's really cool. Like, isn't wow. that isn't that Andrew? That's so yeah. thoughtful, isn't it? man. Name yeah, Andrew. Like, like, do you know what? That's that. gonna go right Player up in the shop, mate. <laughs> Sean, on, yeah. was, Sean, like I only asked you to come in and do a part. I didn't expect you to come right, in man. and shower me with gifts, like. <laughs> and Nick, Jesus, that, Sean, like that's that's a bit. That's I'm a bit right, taken, that's I'm really right, taken right. aback by that. Describe and, like, Andrew. He had, in two he had a baby words. three months ago. And I got him nothing. Yeah. I sent him a text going, "How are things?" <laughs> <laughs> Sean. And he meant to send it to Diona. It wasn't even to me. <laughs> but I said to Diona, let me know when I can see my son. <laughs> but, uh, describe Andrew in two words. It's Ireland and golf, isn't it? Yeah, man, that's wonderful. Like, there's nobody, so there there's nobody that loves being Irish more than me. Hmm. I'm, I'm only, I'm only, that's, 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 that's me. I believe it. Wow, Sean. <laughs> Listen, there you uh, are. Sean Hegarty, stand-up comedian. Uh, after and a, getting me this I'm a stand up guy stand up, stand -up I'm guy. absolutely blown away by this this is genuinely uh, very touching this is something you know 
I'm going to put in the studio, but I'd also love it in me hall. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. In your hall? Yeah. Me hall. All oh, right, okay. It's like, all right, I don't think it'll fit. James, there's many things I can yeah. fit up there. Like. We can make it work. Do you know what? That That is something now that I think um, could go up. Do you know what? Do you know what we're going to do? Sean, come over here now. On the pod, take that. Do you want me to hang it? No, no we'll, just, we'll just put it by. Let's put it down here. Look, we'll just take that. We're going to hang this right up here. This is our first studio. Will we do like a sign it, like a new sign on at a club, or we'll shake hands? We'll shake hands afterwards. Is that straight, Sean? No. Um, it needs to come down to your to the left. left this corner's too high, I think. Is it? How's that? A bit more. Another bit, another bit. Yeah, that's you. Do you know oh what though? My God, I was thinking that, that. Show, show me, show me that on the camera there. Oh, oh my God, that's sexy. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Listen, you cannot get more Republican podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the whole of Sinn Fein will want to come on now. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's one of us. He's one of us, isn't he? He's one of us. I wouldn't vote for you if you. You were the only party going. <laughs> Vote Alliance. Let's all be. Let's all be together as one. Sean Hegarty. There you go. Absolutely that, that could be something, do you know, where you like maybe spend the next few years going round them all and you try well, and almost like take them dude, off. I'll probably get that'll some golfers on someday, but uh, some of the listeners might be like, oh, he's doing a golf week, doing a golf episode this yeah. week. You know, golf is a very unique mm. sport, but this is absolutely fantastic. The Irish golf map. Ah, listen, genuinely touched by that. But oh, James is feeling a bit embarrassed now, isn't he? I brought you. Alter Wayne here. What, what have you got? Coffee. I did drink it. <laughs> I want to say. I did drink it. Do you it know what? Do you know what? <laughs> James came dressed as a pope. He brought the power of forgiveness. Yes, yeah. there we go. <laughs> That's what he's done. There you go, Absolutely right, superb. Do you know what? I, when the child's birthday on, I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll buy something for the child's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, Which you one? ever turn up to someone's house, though, and you don't bring a present? Hmm. It's a bad feeling. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I once something. forgot. This is a true story. I once forgot to send my mother a birthday card. Now, I was very busy at the time and I was abroad and I went, oh shit, I, I had the card at home but I forgot to post it. But I was away for a week. So the, her birthday came along anyway and I rang her up, I think, and I went, well, my happy birthday. And she's like, well, how are you? And she goes to me, well, honey, did you send me any card or anything? Oh, no. I said, ma, look, I bought you a card but I forgot to post it. Oh, did you now? Yes. Did you know? And I was, I was absolutely mortified. That I, it was just, you know, when you're in a rush and you just run out the door and you just forget to do one simple thing. So the next time I was home, then I took her out for a big, big lunch and you know, like made, made it up there. Nice. But this is fantastic. This is isn't that great, Sean? That's what an addition to the brilliant. podcast studio. Thank you so much. You are, we, we've welcome. got three months left and then we're bankrupt. <laughs> so I've got Sell a feeling. It. I've got a feeling. This could be in the house soon, but this yeah, is yeah. this is amazing. We'll do a nice picture by the end of this. Thanks very much, guys. Really do appreciate it. No, just me, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'll just, take just, I'll just, take the appreciation as well. How are you going to explain the direct the, the payments out of your bank account to Diona if you have a shared account, or did just come out of your personal? Me and James. Uh, no, to, 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 to Diona. <laughs> what are you doing buying Andrew Frame pictures? Because if you look behind me, see the one I have there, the Champions League final, nineteen ninety nine, the commentary notes. Oh yeah, oh that's amazing. But, yeah, I got the commentary notes from there. Are you a golf guy, Sean? No, not at all. No. I hate golf. I despise it. <laughs> Fuck I Joe, do you know what I fucking love? Do you know what? If you got this as a present 10 years ago and you're just recycling it to me now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's yeah. It's an old wedding present. Yeah. I hate golf. Yeah, I got that as a wedding present. <laughs> I went to the driving range once and my mother-in-law bought me a fucking golf <laughs> <mat> thing. <laughs> Did you see the video a few weeks ago? What golf tournament was on a few weeks ago? The Ryder Cup. And the some big, old man one. ran through everybody Going and into the water. dived into the water. Did he go back in twice? There's another yeah. video and yeah, he walks true. back up and everyone's cheering. And they're all like, we want more or whatever. And he just turns and runs and fucking like belly flops yeah, in yeah. again. Was he in the nip? No, he was fully clothed, I think. But um, one of the best. I, I That's beautiful. cried laughing. Yeah, but it was the thing, amazing. The thing, the thing about going to something like golf is, right, is uh, you can not you can only see one or two shots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you hold, you can't see it. It's like going to Glastonbury. Say there's 15 stages and there's bands on every hour. You can only be at one stage. Yeah. So you're, you're actually missing 97% of the music. Yeah. It's like being you know at the saying? Formula One and it just goes, <laughs> and you're like, all right, time to go home. What yeah. What do you do next? What happened there? I, I have no interest in Formula One. Yeah. yeah, I think playing golf is like a fantastic kind of setup for talking shit though. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not good at golf, but it's fun to, it's fun I to play. I imagine it's full of banter. There is an <laughs> and I, I don't do banter. There is an element of people who play golf that I feel golf is only what they have. Mm. That's it. And they try to have a lot of influence within their clubs. And I've been members of clubs and stuff like that where I've come across these, how would you call them? Uh, I was going to say Karens. 
Arseholes? Arse. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just say, like, all they have is that sort of community. Yeah. And I've never been one to be involved in any community. I'm very, I find it hard just to be myself. Never mind <laughs> trying to be anything else, right? And uh, some of them make their golf club is, is their life, which is totally fine. If, if that makes you happy, then by all means, go for it. But you do meet some absolute weapons. <laughs> like, I mean, creeps, like idiots people who think they're the bee's knees. I was working in a golf club in Cork and I was 16, 17 at the time. And the captain, every golf club has a captain. Mm -hmm. Every year there's a, a, a lady captain and, a, and a, man, a male captain. Some golf clubs now with ge gender equality and all that, which is great. There's just one captain and it can be a male or it can be a female. And the captain is a sort of like the representative of the club that year to put a bit of their money in. They are the go-to for their, they're like the club, you know, they're, they're doing the, they're doing all the, the, the kind of the professional things that yes. the club has to do. They represent the club and they hold all the award ceremonies and all this, but you're only captain for 12 months. And I was working in there one day and the bar was really busy and the captain walked in and he bumped his way to the front of the queue and he went, <coughs> 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 Point of Murphy's. <laughs> and I just went, fucking here's this prick. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but this captain doesn't realise that he's a civilian. He's he's a Joe Soap next year yes. when his year is up. He's going to yeah. be thrown back to the... And I was still working in the, in the yes. golf club, right? And in the following year, when he was just a normal Joe Soap, they tried to cling on to power. Some of them are megalomaniacs. Yeah. They're like Donald Trump wannabes, <laughs> like, right? He comes back in, the bar is busy or something like that. I just wouldn't serve him. Yes. I just wouldn't serve him. I didn't serve him. I just take, take my take so slow. <laughs> <laughs> I eventually, like, served him. But, like, pedestrian. You made him wait. Just made I him like wait. Like, yeah. You That's know what I mean? Like. Stuff like that just pisses me off. People, people who jump queues and all that, like, mm. you know. I have a feeling, like, someday... Aaron Butler's going to put a hidden camera somewhere and get people to deliberately jump queues at me in coffee shops. Just <laughs> that would be a I'm fucking tell, good show. I am telling yeah. you, like, yeah, I'm turning go, oh, sorry, I didn't realise you were better than me. Do you wipe your own ass? <laughs> yeah, you well, then you were not special. That's but, the way you we break um, it down. Ironically, I feel like Aaron would be the type of person to jump queues. Do you think so? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think he would be, you know. Mm. Yeah, walking in with one no, of those flashy Aaron would be polite. Maybe. You think so, Sean? I think so. I think he, like, if Aaron had the power... To get to the front of a queue, I think he would use that power. Really? I think he'd be like, listen, guys, I'm Aaron Butler. He's like, like, I was get out of here. in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Before the, the economy crashed. <laughs> so are you the kind of guy, who, would you sit there in the queue and just like be annoyed and just not say anything? No, I'd say it, yeah. It's it, you, yeah. You, you, well, I would assess the, the, le the threat level. Does that come with the age, though? Because I've noticed no, myself, I've I have less age. patience now and I'm more outspoken because I'm getting older. Um, I have been an absolute shit show for my whole life. <laughs> I am intolerant of people who feel they are superior to other people. Mm. It really bugs me. Yeah. Like, I'll give you an example how worried I was about here. Do you notice I'm a little bit higher than you guys? I was actually worried that it may feel that I might be coming across as impo more imposing or no feeling a little bit more <laughs> superior because I'm a little bit higher. <laughs> That's just because of the way the table is. And I didn't want it. I didn't want that. Mm. I'm a firm believer. Like, I'm a firm believer in everybody is. Like, if you wipe your own ass, you're the same as everybody else. So, therefore, exactly, everybody's yeah. equal. Well, then I'm better then than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Fiona does me. <laughs> you just sit there and ring a bell. I just, the kids I take turns. I click. <laughs> you and you and nursing home patients are like on another oh, echelon. Well, yeah. nursing home patients, I can just about get away with it if they want yeah. to skip the queue. You know what I mean? Um, what was the last argument you've had with your wife? I see that's the thing. I I would take a bullet for Diona in in a heartbeat, but she does Diona's my a great woman. She's a lovely she, woman. Uh, yeah, yeah. She does my fucking son. Really? <laughs> I, I, I tell her this all day. Why? Um, just patty wee things. She eats a McDonald's, right? And she eats. She gets the fries. Like, um, imagine you have a fry in your hand now, right? Just a wee McDonald's chip. Yeah. You go bite, and then you take your hand away, and then you bite it again, or else you just put it all in one go. Diona goes. Arr, arr, arr. So she like the like whole way hamster just with with every fucking fry, oh, that, and we get large oh, meals when we go in. So that gives me anxiety. Yeah, yeah. that's a lot. Ooh, so she's a, one she's, thing. She's like a rabbit. Yeah, she would make lunch, and she would leave everything out on the counter. Like Dion is one of the tidiest people I've ever met. But when it comes to cooking, she just uses something for two seconds and just leaves it. Like every, like when you you could walk down our kitchen and just scan the kitchen and go, oh, you've made spaghetti with meatballs with. Red sauce or, you know, whatever. Like, everything is just left out. Does my Is she out. messy? No, no, not at all. Mm. Just so in tidy. that particular just, instance. Just in and that. would she leave it there? Leaves it. for Like, forever? Um, Until well, you clean it? I don't know. See, I, I, I tidied up straight away, so I don't know. I should maybe leave it sometime and just see Let how, her how many weeks pass. She's... 
she's done. Mm. That's interesting because I'm incredibly aware of that kind of stuff. I get told off for chewing. Mm. The chewing. You know? I have music on when we're chewing. I, ca I can't stand it. I'll be chewing, right? Yeah. But I, I think I'm a good boyfriend. You are. But I, <laughs> but I have certain behaviours that I think Julie is is just going okay. That's still fine. She's I can totally work with it. it. Like I am incredibly impatient, like mm. insanely impatient. Like, like we when we were in Germany, she said to me, she was like, "Are you going to be okay in the airport today?" And I went, "Yeah, I'll be fine." Because I travel mostly alone, you know. When I when I and I have I have I have the routine like. Yeah. I have a routine in an airport. I know what to exactly pack in the bag. I, I don't even wear a belt when I'm leaving the house because the, the belt is in the bag. The toiletries are ready. The laptop is ready. They're all in sync. It's do, 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 in the trays. Go straight through. We were, when we were going out to Berlin and stuff like that, it was a bit like we decided to treat ourselves. We got the uh, airport lounge. right? And you ever walk into an airport lounge, you go, right, I don't fit in here, but I'm just going to see what I can nick. Yes, it's <laughs> yeah. free food, isn't it? Yes, yeah. take euro get, each. And it did. Like Sean, Experience you were in the Erdingus Lounge, weren't you, for your honeymoon? Yeah. Oh, how did you get that? The I just oh well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm Andrew gave us it as a as a wedding present oh, actually. No, so that's a nice. lovely present. No, so no, I was that. really nice. And Sean's getting divorced now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, no. yeah, have no wee baby. What? what? Ooh, congratulations, yeah, man. Did you not even know this? Yeah. Oh, Can I Sean. do the christening? What? Can I do the christening? You can't indeed, yes, <laughs> Father. <laughs> Sean, when we were talking about babies, you know, there was an energy over there. Yeah, you know, what I mean? Sean, are you waiting. serious? Sort of go on, yeah. Ah, listen, round of applause for Sean. That's great. When did you Thank find you. out? Um, a good two months ago or something. Oh, mate, ah, this is awesome. yeah, When do you know class. if it's a boy or a girl? Next Friday. I know you got oh, to find it's out. It's just on that date. Everybody in the world who's pregnant finds out next Friday. Day. No. Mm -hmm. Um, are you going to find out? I am going to find out, yeah. Oh, listen, so. Sean, congrats. Do you know what? You'll be a great dad, mate. Thanks very much, You'll bro. You'll be a fantastic dad. And Come is your wife healthy? Is she okay? All good? She's doing great. Everything's going oh, well. That's lovely. That's good positivity. <clears throat> what I love, it? too, is that you hold him in the same regard as us, that you find that it's necessary to tell us all at the same time. Yes, exactly. Whereas yeah. I thought I you would have been tell. told separately. You know, like, no, we're all equal. Sean's going to get jealous and have another kid. I know, I know. <laughs> to try and talk this. Then I'm going to have Top seven two. kids just <laughs> yeah. to be Sean. Uh, listen, Sean, I'm absolutely delighted for yeah, you. Thank Brilliant. you. I wanted to tell mate. Andrew, Sean, Father McCagney all at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, and on the day when the Pope is here. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Your holiness. Whatever you do, don't let him near the kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, that's Sean, Sean that's fantastic, oh, man. Cheers. I'm absolutely delighted for you. Ah, uh, listen, there'll be a we wet the baby's head soon now. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Bro. So, when's the baby actually due? Uh, 17th of April. Oh, I'm busy. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> How many jobs? I've got a funeral on that date. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, listen, well, listen, well, congratulations. And I really hope um, uh, everybody, if you do well and everything goes good, is she, is she, are you nervous? Like, no, I'm all good. And it's actually, it's poignant that we're talking about it on this podcast because we've talked a few times about kids and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I'm, 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 I like, and I, I find, I, that's what I said it to you as well, like James. Like, obviously, you know, it's, 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 it's fucking terrifying. Do you think, or like, have you any plans to have? No, but I love my girlfriend so much. So if, if, like, if it happened, you oh man, I'd be absolutely sweet. buzzed. Yeah, like my missus. Like, I don't think I've ever met a girl that allows that that I can be myself one hundred percent. That's good. That's and nice. and not only that, I can be a hundred and ten percent and be incredibly annoying to her, but mm -hmm. she just she's like, it's fine. You are, yes. you are. That's what I'm like the the owner too. That's when you, you know, know it's I mean? the one. Yeah, know. and like it's kind of like things like we we have great time. Sometimes we play I play hide and go seek in the house and stuff. Like, <laughs> like I'm that's serious. Amazing, we yeah. run around the house chasing each other and trying to take <laughs> each other. Like, and it's that's like amazing. and I just said to myself like I've never had that. That's and good. like we're getting on really really well. Like, don't get me wrong. Like we both we 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 you know we're, Julie's a very busy girl. Like you know she's got a great online business. She's working full time. She comes home. Her job is physical. She's tired. You know, I might not see her all day and I come in and I'm like, well, hey, how are you? And she's like, I'm drained. I'm like, oh, oh, I understand. You, you know, like the, that's good she, to understand, needs, she needs to sit on a sofa, have a cup of tea and just uh, decompress. Yes. Where I'm like, oh, anyway, and then this happened and that happened. And, this happened, <laughs> and Sean's having a baby. It's mental, isn't it? <laughs> like, you know what I mean, right? And then I get giddy. I get really giddy. And then she'll go up to her studio and do a bit of work with her Instagram stuff. Uh, a nice touch It's called an Instagram. If you want to check it out, you can buy some stuff for Christmas on it. And uh, But we get on great. Like... I will irritate her, like, 
like she thinks sometimes I can be quite um I'm very if I've got a job to do, I have to do that job. Yeah. I can't be like, oh yeah, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, typing away and I, I'm like, Can you just one one just one and then it's <laughs> it kind of might come across as not saying rude, but I, I'm very like, um Yeah. I'll deal with this in a minute. Do you know what I mean? And it's been like, Well, okay, no need for the attitude. I'm like, what? no, no, sorry, I'm not I'm not trying to be <laughs> I I'm not trying I'm just Oh, oh no, oh no. Yeah. Do you know what, you know what I mean? Maybe kids aren't for you then. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Seriously. So I think, I just think like, I'd love to do it, especially with Julie. She's great. Like, yep. And also as well, you can just tell from her, she's got great empathy, very kind, mm. very good with her time, very thoughtful, very funny. Like I'd love to get her on here, but she wouldn't come on. No. <laughs> very funny. And yeah, like you wake up in the morning and you go, ah, oh, you're still nice. here. Yes. Yeah. It's nice. Like, and like, it's not one of those relationships where you're going, oh, Okay, that's kind of bugging me a bit. There's zero bugging me. Yeah, I'm sure she might have a few things about me that bug her, <laughs> but we cannot. But they're not big things. Yeah, like that's, you know, yeah, chewing yeah. the food, it's not a big thing. That's it. That's it. Yeah, me and the owner have we have a hundred things like that on each other. But at the end of the day, like we know that we we love each other so much, yeah. and where we know we're going to be together, and trust is everything, yeah. and we know that we have we have nothing to worry about. You yeah. know, no matter what we do, that annoys the other person, even if we have an argument or we fall out. We make up ten minutes later. Do you know what I mean we know that it's not? Oh, we resolve everything straight away. Yeah, and like we never once. It's not important. It's in, not important. In our relationship, not once has a voice ever been raised. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I think if you're in a relationship and you're raising your voice to your partner, no matter how frustrating or things go, I think that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get? Do you ever see that in public? Oh, oh, that. that Have period? you ever seen a domestic? Yeah, in public, I've seen like mm -hmm. a guy be arrested. One time, because they were having such a bad argument in a restaurant, they called the police on him. He was just yeah. losing it. Like It's such a difficult so situation to, to be to. in as an onlooker, isn't it? We yeah. were in um, the Czech Republic doing IVF, which is something that I didn't get onto. We me and the owner did IVF um, to have our two latest kids. And um, there was a guy who was attacking his, his girlfriend on the train. And I was looking around and I was like, could someone help me here? Do you know, approach this man. He was like punching her in the stomach and stuff. And she was holding a child oh, and she had oh another child Jesus. in her hand. But they were speaking a different language and no one was willing to help out. And I had to go and get one of the, like, I say security guards. It was just someone who worked at the train station. And they went in and tried to resolve it. But the whole time I was standing there as if like, I'm in a foreign country. I, I don't speak the language here. Can someone Jesus. please either show me physical signs that they're willing to step in with me and will help this guy out and i felt bad because i'm like what sort of man am i standing next to my wife who's just had an embryo so put in and i am afraid to approach this man who's like punching his his partner in the stomach and i was like i just felt like i i was two foot tall I was like, what, did, what did the guy do that you or the the staff member that you called over they went up and had a chat and then the guy came out and i said so what's going to happen and the guy says, no, they've, they've sorted it all out. The train doors closed and the train went away. Fuck. And I was like, fuck me. What, what sort that of going life has this girl had and what is she going to have? It's, you know, to me straight away is, 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 is the fear and anxiety of that woman and child mm. in that relationship. Yeah. That scumbag. Like Something um, that was quite positive about uh, the last wee appointment we had for the pregnancy was uh, that, you know, when you go for your 12 weeks, and stuff they um they're asking you all the questions but for a moment in it they actually bring the coal outside and they bring her separate from me yeah, I've heard this. and they say um oh just wanted to check with you uh, that this relationship you're in isn't this isn't being forced or that you're yeah. not uncomfortable mm -hmm. or there's anything um any malice going on behind the scenes here, so, so she's being coerced into having a baby on yeah. the horse story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or that like there's nothing abuseful yeah. going on. But, but so it, that yeah. which is nice. That, that, that's that is nice, but at the same time, anyone who's going any <sighs> going through any kind of trauma, they're they're not gonna speak up because, yeah, because yeah. what's what what's gonna happen here? Do you know I mean there's there's gonna be there's too much force, there's too much what if it's when I get home if nothing's done here and we leave this room, I'm I'm in for it, do you know what I mean? It is such a horrible situation for people to be in. Yeah. And I don't know what the solution is. Domestic I don't abuse know, is, I don't, I don't know the worst. how you, there's, there's no protocol to f solve it. Like if you were on that train now and this guy 
you don't know what if you went in and intervened and pushed this guy off him you don't know he whip that out could a knife anger exactly, him. exactly you don't know what you could need happen. like a yeah. sort of like a group of people to go right we're not sad. like yeah I know somebody that saw a man in his 70s hit his wife in the 60s in London she was in her 60s in London and she went over and intervened and the wife had dementia and they intervened it was three of them three girls intervened and they told the guy not to leave and they called the police and the, the wife was just like oh no it's fine and it was just like but you don't know, like, you know, when your whole world is wrapped around one person, there's like this financial abuse, there's domestic oh, yeah. abuse, there's physical abuse, there's emotional trauma, there's manipulation, there's gas. Like, like when you live with somebody and you, you, some, like some men are reliant on their partner's income. Some women are relied on their partner's income. You know, there yeah. could be only one income coming into the house, whether the husband stays at home or the wife goes out or girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. And, 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 and like, there's a hold there and it's very dangerous and very toxic and i always i always said this that there should be a section in society for in every city or every town where there's a certain number of placements for people who want to get out of that that there is a there is like an immediate care package available yeah yeah, yeah. so that they come out and they go and stay somewhere and then certain people are appointed to negotiate and to retrieve items and to sort out housing yeah, and to sort they out care to themselves. Yeah. and and also it's like two to one staffing you are then, if say for example, Sean, you were a victim of domestic violence or something, you would then have a staff member with you at all times until things are gone through the court. Yeah. And it's like I would happily volunteer to to sit outside someone's house for for three four hours so that somebody couldn't get in. Yeah, a million percent. It's absolutely horrendous. I'll tell you where it starts. I'll tell you where it starts. Educating our sons. That's where it fucking yeah. starts. I'm telling you now. That's uh, what are your kids like? Boys need educated. I try and teach my kids all the time, just respectful. My son, he's obviously 19 now, but he, he's been in relationships and stuff in the past. And immediately you sit him down, you go, listen, you know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, consent is is everything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You you ask, you be polite, you you know, you know, respect your, your partner's wishes and stuff, and you do what they want to do, and you don't do anything that they don't want to do. And... I know so many people aren't doing that and, and, and I feel like I'm even not doing it enough because it is an, an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. It really, really is. Like, and, you know, handing them condoms and stuff and it's like, even you going into the shop and buying them, even as a 35, 40 year old man, you, yeah, you feel a, embarrassed. It's you're like, like oh, please you're nobody look at me. Single again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The wife left me, I've done all of the apps. Yeah. Like, I need yeah. a pack of 12. My yeah. son likes the ribbed. What's it like? <laughs> 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 James, what's it like in the gay scene in terms of consent and stuff like that? Because obviously, oh yeah, exactly the same. Is of course. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Well, I, I assume so. For most people, it has to be the same, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. There's no real. Se- if you're being forced to anything you don't want to do, that's it's not good. Kind of across the board. Oh yeah, surely. of course. Yeah, but like, I suppose obviously, like you know, with it being men and women. Yeah, like right. It's, so it's I think like, if if you go into certain clubs. Like, there is, like, a lot more kind of people filling each other up, but it's kind of like, you know that going in there. Like a mutual risk. There's mutual, a mutual thing, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But even then, if someone's doing it and you're like, no, and they persist, it's it's no good. So there's kind of like, if you want to go and get an old feel, you can go in there, like. If that's... What's the name of that club? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's certain, it's certain clubs. It wouldn't be every club, but there's certain clubs that maybe there's, like, an event night like do you know what i mean like say it was like kink night or whatever right. everybody's in being a bit kinky it's on the cards but again if someone's not comfortable with it they can show are you kinky mm. no i'm really not are you straight down i'm the just line? like i'm just straight down the line yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> broke back mountain style do you know what i mean oh uh, yeah yeah but i but it is there's a there's a whole but i think it's the same in the street world there's like a whole other underbelly of different kinks and tastes that people mm. are into do you know what i mean it's uh, fascinating it's, what's out there isn't there it's, it's, yeah it's crazy you can go there. to like for example when we were in berlin we went and there was a whole street just dedicated to people in kink outfits like people were dressed up like like nothing but like a fucking a few wires and stuff and i remember i was leaving one club and the the bouncer was like oh you must come back in february we're going to have a whole street the policeman dressed up He's like, in the corner, we're going to have say pop play area. Pop play area. People dress, people dress up like dogs. And they've what? Like, yeah, dude, they've what? got a wee corner where they just pretend to be dogs. <laughs> like, on the right. street. Why didn't I see that one? Yeah, man, I'm there. going yeah. back. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Have you ever dressed up? No, I don't do, I don't do all that. that. No. Do, do you know one thing that I will never get my head around? And these people, they'll be out here on Halloween night and they need arrested. 
people who want their partners to dress up as schoolgirls. Yeah, man, that's a that's, weird, weird. Th- that's huge. Think like, about Japan, it. Japan, that's a massive think about thing. It. Yeah, I watch a documentary like, about. Arrest them all. Girls living here, who like live normal lives here, but they're like famous in Japan because they have like an alter ego. They'll dress up as a schoolgirl. They'll have fans. These men will, so they'll like collect wee cards with these girls' images on them. These men will send the presents, but over here they're just. They're making a mint over there, like, Jeez. once a month, coming back, just living down the way. Do you know in Japan, you can hire someone to cuddle you? Yeah, man. So you pay for it, it's like an hour cuddle, Shit. and you lie down in the bed, nothing... Not to That happens. would be so uncomfortable. You come in, and they just cuddle you, because apparently Japanese men are insanely lonely. Yeah, that's... It's a very there's, aging there's population, sh- apparently, mm-hmm. and they're, they're very, very lonely. Isn't it... Is it Japan, or is it China? They had, like, the one... The male child policy is, like... China. It's one, China. One, one child per family. Yeah, yeah so yeah, apparently yeah. that's, like, a major issue now, that there's, like... Just way more meals man. yeah it's mm. complete sausage fest. <laughs> it's like way more meals and because they're like chronically online they're not getting girlfriends they're not having families so they're having a major problem with an aging population as well that same thing it's amazing how yeah the knock-on effects from tech say from 2000 say when tech really blew up in 2010 11 12 how that's going to impact society's growth mm. yeah know, just 20, that 30, minor 30, change 20, just... yeah because like my like my like i've uh, uh, 19 uncles and aunts because they were just, everyone was just rampant yeah. now it's like oh we couldn't have more than two yeah exactly yeah, yeah. you know what I mean apart from Sean yeah. well, you couldn't have more than two like you know what I'm saying you're old school you know my, I mean? my mum my has 14 brothers and sisters and my dad has 16 I have aunties now I, I forget their names I, I couldn't tell you their names you I have could, cousins you... I've never met I have uh, all kinds of family members that I've just I have no you're responsible existed. for a whole county yeah, yeah pretty much on yeah. this you're, island we're yeah. for you. <laughs> Sean Hegarty Leitrim. <laughs> <laughs> on, that, on that note, listen, everybody, thanks for coming in, guys. I'm on the side. That's it, yeah. God Sean? Damn. It's been a pleasure. Are we good, yeah? Yeah. All good. Listen to everybody, this has been great crack. We've, like, yeah. where are we? Oh, yeah, we've done an hour. I can't believe that. Are, yeah. we, are we up to an hour? Not, not really. What are we? <laughs> we're like 56, and well, I am there we go. To take out my piss break. Oh, so then... we're about 53. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just Keep talk about what's coming up for you, lads. Uh, James? Uh, yes, I've got Martin Felt, the Terrace Comedy Club. So I'm running that with Fendi Harvey now. Yes, because I've done it a couple of times. So yes, both of you have gone in as a partnership. Yes, man. 100%. Okay, so in a couple gig. of weeks, mate. Somebody great leave. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'll be getting a lot of sweet money. Um, no, but it's going well. So we had the first night. Our McCann this Thursday is Mark McConnell. And I'm booked so. in as well for are, next yeah. year as well. Yeah. I'm back Have you booked in, Tony? No. I'll right. get you booked in. Yeah, yeah. All right. Dude, yeah. Do you know what's actually so hard? See, when you get like the list of months. It just completely shortens the year, and there's so many people doing comedy. You just mm. cannot even like. Oh no, you can't. Yeah. You gotta be. You gotta be. But you also gotta like. You gotta you know put a balance on show on. Yeah, so that's like, the thing as well. Know, yeah, I've be been, I've been running gigs now for about two years, and I find like the first year was like that. Yeah. But now the second year is just like there's nobody else. Everyone, you just You've have, done to, everybody, you have yeah. to book the same headliners. Every time he's contacted me for a gig, no, nah, can't do it. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not free. <laughs> and then he's like, "Can you do this?" No, nah, can't do it. And I'm like free this weekend because I was supposed to go to the Rugby World Cup final. Yeah. Won't mention it. <laughs> and have my flights and everything booked. No, and I cancelled the hotel for free. And they goes, "You know, reason for cancelling?" And I went, "New Zealand." <laughs> Cheated that rugby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the hotel have not come back to me yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. they've not come back but that's no excuse but anyway uh, Sean keeps messaging me like oh can you do this in Lisbon can you do that gig here can you do I'm like mate I can't I can't I can't and then boom we've got them in January, January. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we're, we're going to be in Lisbon in January where else are we going to be um, Thirsty Jays I the think Thirsty Jays Cookstown as well yeah, we're going to be in Cookstown is that the same place I was in before no, you in haven't Cookstown. done Cookstown yet, have you? Yeah, the, For one me? With the bar on the side. Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you have done that it. one. Yeah, so not that one then. It's not that we'll one. get you somewhere else. Is it that one? PB's. You've done PB's I've as done well. I've done PB's. PB's was great. It's a great one. Like yes. a room that shouldn't be a room. Yeah. A room that shouldn't have comedy, um, had comedy, just works and it works perfectly. It's perfect. Yeah, you, have you not done it? I don't think so. I'll get you in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, if you want to follow the Pope on Instagram, uh, <laughs> at James McKegney. At James McKegney. Uh, hashtag hallelujah <laughs> Sean your new podcast with your lovely wife Diona yeah meet the parents it's called um, just search for it online thank you James um, we have the, the video versions on YouTube it's on Spotify iTunes things all like right that and um, we put all your socials on the, on the YouTube you. as well putting the finishing touches as well to a, a joke book my first like Brilliant. proper joke Brilliant. book coming out for kids uh, it's, I think we're calling it something like my first joke book do you know what something like that you know great yeah. present for a child yeah, yeah. well that's, that's what we're thinking it's supposed to be coming out we've been working on this for the past two years 
me and my literary agent and it's supposed to be coming out next november but they're trying to push it back now to june july so people can buy it for their kids going on holidays and also going back to school and also for christmas yeah, yeah. i'm August. actually writing new material so can i have it <laughs> 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 i need it <laughs> you can write why, the forward for me yeah, yeah. why does your dad only come at the weekends because of what he did in the house six months ago and the police had to intervene <laughs> and everyone's just like oh <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Sean, congratulations. Thank yeah, you man. very much. I hope uh, you and your lovely wife, Nicole, uh, have a have a great pregnancy together. Are you, going are to you sober now? Are you sober for the full nine months, Sean? I am. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're okay. up. You, well, so far, right, it's going well. We'll pass on our regards to Nicole. Thank you And we very hope much. it goes really well. Everybody, Cork in the North, thanks to everyone for being here. Thursday, six o'clock. Please sign up to the Patreon links below. We do appreciate it. Keep your eyes peeled for a new live show coming up. And also stand updates as well are all up my website, andrewryancomedy.com. I will also be getting a new website in the next couple of weeks and stuff. I've had a few bits and bobs done. Uh, but thanks to everybody. And tune in as well, Q Radio, 6 to 10 o'clock in the morning. That would be great. Thanks, everyone. Once again, some cracking guests coming up as well as the two we've had today. We've got some great people booked in. I won't tell you who it is, but let's just say there's going to be uh, going to be a lot of fun coming up in the next few weeks. But please do, if you like the podcast, please do support us on Patreon. Uh, sign up in links there. Thanks very much, everyone. See you soon.